Hello viewers, Namaskar and welcome back to the series on New Criminal Laws. I am Professor Vageshwari Deswal, a professor at Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. In this session, we will be dealing with how the changes have been brought about in offences relating to Army, Navy, Air Force, elections, coins, currency notes, bank notes, government stamps, stamps and uh, offences against public tranquility. So in this session, we will talk about changes in chapters 8, 9, 10 and 11 of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita. First of all, let us talk about chapter 8. Chapter 8 of the BNS deals with offences relating to Army, Navy and Air Force. So under section 160 of the BNS that has replaced section 132 of the Indian Penal Code, abetment of mutiny, if mutiny is committed in consequence thereof. Now this is a punishable offence. So what is mutiny? As per the dictionary meaning, mutiny means an act of a group of people, especially sailors or soldiers, who refuse to obey the person who is in command. So mutiny basically means revolt. And what was sought to be punished under section 132 of IPC was mutiny. So now this is something that we have retained under section 160 of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita but the only difference is that the prescribed punishment, this has been increased now. Earlier the punishment was imprisonment of 3 years and now it has been increased up to 10 years. Then there is an exception clause to section 164 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita. So it says while section 136 Indian Penal Code specifically mentioned that the exception applies when a wife provides shelter to her husband. Under Bharatiya Nyay Sahita section 164 now this has been made gender neutral. How? Because it uses the more gender neutral term spouse. See in IPC what was the term that was used was wife. Meaning that it could be only a man who, who could be a deserter and it was the wife who was providing shelter to her deserter husband. But now see in contemporary times what has happened. Now even women they are joining the armed forces. So that is why there is a possibility that a woman might also be a deserter and she might be granted harbour by her husband. So that is why there is a gender neutral term spouse that has replaced the old term wife indicating that the exception now this applies when either a husband or a wife provides shelter to their spouse who is a deserter. So you see this is a change which is indicative or reflective of a more inclusive approach in the new laws. Then section 165 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita that replaces section 137 of the IPC says deserter concealed on board merchant vessel through negligence of master. So earlier if there was a deserter who was concealed on board a merchant navy vehicle, uh, vessel and this was because of negligence on account of the master that is the captain of the ship then there was a fine prescribed of rupees 500. Now the fine it has been increased to rupees 3000. See there has to be some sort of a deterrent effect because the old fines they were considered as not appropriate enough to serve as any kind of a deterrence to such crimes. Then under section 166 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita which has replaced section 138 of the Indian Penal Code. Now under that abetment of act of insubordination 
by soldier, sailor or airman. And there the punishment now it has been increased. Earlier it was punishable with imprisonment up to 6 months. Now it has been increased fourfold to go up to 2 years. Then under section 168 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita that has replaced section 140 of the Indian Penal Code. Now wearing any garb or carrying a token that is used by soldier, sailor or airman. So if you are not a soldier, you are not a sailor, you are not a airman but you want to take advantage of the certain privileges that are given to them by virtue of the very tough nature of their services and if towards that end you are wearing some garb that is worn by a soldier or if you are carrying any token see whatever the objective might be you might be wanting to slip into the forces or whatever the objective might be but even if you have just wore their dress or if you are carrying a token so as to misrepresent yourselves to be a soldier sailor or airman then the fine it has been increased fourfold. Earlier the fine was just rupees 500, now it has been increased up to rupees 2000. So irrespective of their objective if you are doing this act that in itself is punishable under section 168 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita. So after these changes in offences against state now we will talk about the changes that have been introduced under chapter 9 of the BNS which deals with offences related to elections. This is now covered in section 169 to section 177 of chapter 9. Earlier this was given under chapter 9A that was spread across section 171A to section 171I of the Indian Penal Code. So why do we need to have this chapter titled as offences related to elections? See viewers, elections are fundamental to the democratic governance of any country. Elections give the power to citizens to elect their representatives, those representatives who will ensure that their interests are taken care of by the state. Hence, free and fair elections are the backbone of a democratic state. So in this chapter related to elections, there are two main changes. One is in section 176 of the BNS that has replaced section 171H of the Indian Penal Code. So in cases of illegal payments that are done in relation with the election, earlier the amount of fine that was prescribed was rupees 500 but now this amount of fine it has been raised 20 fold and now it could be up to rupees 10,000. Similarly, in section 177 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita that has replaced section 171i of the Indian Penal Code, failure to keep election accounts, here also the amount of fine it has been raised tenfold. Earlier it was rupees 500 and now the amount of fine it can go up to rupees 5,000. Moving on to the next chapter that is chapter 10 which deals with offences related to coin, currency notes, bank notes and government stamps. So now we have chapter 10 in the BNS that deals with these offences and it is spread from section 178 to section 188 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita. In Indian Penal Code all these were covered under two separate chapters. So we had a separate chapter for offences relating to coin and government stamps and there was a, was a separate chapter dealing with offences relating to currency notes and bank notes. So these were chapters 12 from section 230 to section 263A and chapter 18 from section 489A to section 489E in the Indian Penal Code. So now coming to chapter 10 in which we have dealt with offences whether they relate to coins, currency notes, bank notes and government stamps. 
So currency, why it is important to safeguard our currency is because currency consists of paper or coins that are issued by the state and it is vital for the economic growth of any nation. Thus, we need to safeguard our currency. Under section 178 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita, counterfeiting coin, government stamps, currency notes or bank notes. Now, these were all covered under section 230, section 231, 232, 246, 247, 248, 249, 255 and 489 of the IPC. Now, they have been all put together in one single section and that is section 178 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita and under the new provision, mere possession of forged or counterfeit currency notes or bank notes is not an offence. See what is not an offence is mere possession of these forged or uh, mere possession of this forged or counterfeit currency notes. Under section 179 of the BNS that has replaced the multiple provisions of IPC which were section 239, section 240, section 241, 250, 251, 254, 258, 260 and 489B. Now, this is replaced by section 179 of the BNS which deals with using as genuine forged or counterfeit coin, government stamps, currency notes or bank notes. Then section 180 of the BNS, it replaces section 242, section 243, section 252, section 253, 259 and 489C of the Indian Penal Code. So, section 180 now clubs them all together and provides punishment for possession of forged or counterfeit coin, government stamps, currency notes or bank notes. So, as per this, whoever has in his possession any forged or counterfeit coin, stamp, currency note or bank note knowing or having reason to believe the same to be forged or counterfeit and intending to use the same as genuine or that it may be used as genuine shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 7 years or with fine or with. So, you see mere possession is not punishable, but if you have in your possession any forged or counterfeit coin, stamp, currency note or bank note, despite knowing or having reason to believe the same to be forged or counterfeit and intending to use the same or as genuine or that it may be used as genuine. So, despite you not having the intention to use it as genuine, but even if you knew or if you have reasons to believe that if you continue keeping that counterfeit coin, currency note or bank note and there is a possibility that someone might use it as genuine, then in such cases it would be punish punishable and the punishment may go up to 7 years or with fine and even both. So, there is an explanation now to this section which says, if a person establishes the possession of the forged or counterfeit coin, stamp, currency, note or bank note to be from a lawful source, then it shall not constitute an offence under this section. Suppose you go to an ATM machine, you have gone to withdraw some money. Now, when you try to withdraw that money, there are some counterfeit currency notes that are handed over to you. So, now what happens? Would that constitute an offence? The answer is no, because it is something which you have got from a lawful source. So, your malafides are not established in such a case and then it shall not constitute an offence under this section. Under section 181 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita, making or possessing instruments or materials for forging or counterfeit coin, government stamp, currency notes or bank notes. Now, all these were earlier covered under sections 233, 234, 235, 
257 and 489D of the Indian Penal Code. Now they have been all clubbed together in one single provision that is section 181 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita. So making, possessing instruments or sometimes possessing materials that are used for forging, docu forging of coins or uh, forging any uh, counterfeit currency or counterfeit coins, making government stamps, currency notes or forging certain bank notes. So even if you are making the, them or even if you are possessing any instruments or materials that can be employed for forging of all such, so that would be all punishable now under section 181 of the BNS. Then section 182 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita that has replaced section 489E of the Indian Penal Code. Now this deals with making or using documents resembling currency notes or bank notes. So what the law says is whoever makes or causes to be made or uses for any purpose whatsoever or delivers to any person any document purporting to be or in any way resembling or so nearly resembling as to be calculated to deceive any currency note or bank note, then the punishment that has been prescribed is fine which may extend to 300 rupees. See earlier this was 100 rupees. So now this has been raised threefold to 300 rupees. Then it also says if any person whose name appears on a document, the making of which is an offence under subsection 1 of section 182 of the BNS. So if any such person refuses without any lawful excuse to disclose to a police officer on being so required the name and address of the person by whom it was printed or otherwise made, then he shall be punished with fine. And what is the fine here? 600 rupees. Earlier this was 200 rupees. So now the fine for making or using documents resembling currency notes or bank notes, now this is all gone up from 100 to 300 and from 200 to 600 rupees. So now the fine it has been increased threefold. Then under subsection 3 where the name of any person appears on any document in respect of which any person is charged with any offence under subsection 1 or, or any other document used or distributed in connection with that document, it may until the contrary is proved be presumed that the person caused the document to be made. So now after discussing the changes that have been introduced in chapter 10 of the BNS, we will now talk about the changes that have been introduced in chapter 11. Chapter 11 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita deals with offences against public tranquility. Now this ranges from sections 189 to section 197 of the BNS. So section 191 of the Bharatiya Nyay Sahita deals with the offence of rioting. Earlier, this was covered under sections 146, 147 and section 148 of the Indian Penal Code. So 191 subsection 1 it says, whenever force or violence is used by an unlawful assembly or by any member thereof in prosecution of the common object of such assembly then every member of such assembly is guilty of the offence of writing. So what this requires is that there should be usage of force or there should be usage of violence and it should be used not by any individual person. It should be used either by an unlawful assembly that has to consist of minimum 5 people or by any member thereof that is a member of an unlawful assembly 
and that force or violence it should be used in prosecution of the common objective of such assembly. Then irrespective of the part that was played by the members, every member of such an unlawful assembly and they would be all held equally guilty of the offence of rioting. Then under subsection 2, whoever is guilty of rioting shall be punished with imprisonment and the imprisonment could be of either description which may extend to 2 years or with fine or with both. So irrespective of the damage that has been caused, all those who are accused of the offence of rioting, so there could be imprisonment up to 2 years and imprisonment could be of either description, it could be simple, it could be rigorous and additionally fine can also be imposed. In some cases where it feels that, where the court feels that it is a very uh, trivial kind of an offence, then the accused can be let off with mere fine also in such cases. Then in subsection 3, the imprisonment has also been increased for writing. It says, whoever is guilty of writing, being armed with a deadly weapon or with anything which used as a weapon of offence is likely to cause death. So see what is punishable here is when you are doing an offence of writing and at the same time the accused is also armed with either a deadly weapon or with something which can be used as a weapon of offence and it is so dangerous that it is an offence which is likely to cause death. Then in such cases there is a higher punishment that has been prescribed and that is imprisonment of either description which may extend to 5 years. Earlier under the IPC the punishment for this was imprisonment up to 3 years. So BNS it increases the punishment up to 5 years and it could be also fine or it could be just fine or it could be both. Now section 194 of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita deals with the crime of affray. Earlier sections 159 and section 160 of the Indian Penal Code dealt with the offence of affray. Now what 194 says is when two or more persons, so you see for writing we require an unlawful assembly. So there have to be a minimum of five persons. For FRA there could be two or more than two persons. So the minimum number of persons required for FRA is two. The law says when two or more persons by fighting in a public place disturb the public peace. So they are said to commit an FRA. So it is a very simple definition what is required is minimum of two people they should be fighting the fight should be taking place not in private premises but in a public place and that should have the potential of disturbing the public peace. Then what is the punishment under subsection 2 of section 194 whoever commits an affray shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to one month or with fine which may extend to 1000 rupees or with both. So this is a token form punishment, one month imprisonment or 1000 rupees so that people they do not fight in public. Earlier the amount of fine that was prescribed for FRA in IPC was just rupees 100. So now this has been increased tenfold and now it is 1000 rupees. Then Section 195 subsection 1, now section 195 it has replaced section 152 of the IPC and it deals with assaulting or obstructing public servant when suppressing riot etc. So if you assault a public servant or you obstruct a public servant and that is at a time when he is engaged in rough suppressing a riot, then in such cases the law has criminalized such actions. Section 195 subsection 1 says whoever assaults or obstructs any public servant or uses criminal force on any public servant in the discharge of his duty as such public servant in endeavouring to disperse an unlawful assembly or to suppress a riot or affray shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 3 years or 
with fine which shall not be less than 25,000 rupees or with both. So now what does the law do? It prescribes a minimum punishment and the minimum punishment is also fine which shall not be less than 25,000 rupees. So this is a provision which is intended to have a deterrent effect. Then subsection 2, it punishes even threatening or attempting to obstruct public servants. It says whoever threatens to assault or attempts to assault any public servant or threatens or attempts to use criminal force to any public servant in the discharge of his duty as such public servant in endeavouring to disperse an unlawful assembly or to suppress a riot or affray shall be punished and the punishment would be imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with both. So earlier there was the same punishment for assaulting, obstructing, threatening or attempting. But now what has happened in BNS? Now this law it has been divided in two subsections. Also the amount of fine that has been prescribed that is the minimum amount that has been prescribed. So you see now there is not the same punishment. If you are assaulting or obstructing a public servant punishment is different and if you are threatening or attempting to assault or obstruct the public servant even that is punishable but the punishment is different. Now we move on to section 196 of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita that has replaced section 153a of the Indian Penal Code. Now this is a provision that deals with promoting enmity between different groups on grounds of religion, race, place of birth, residence, language etc and doing acts that are prejudicial to maintenance of harmony. So if you are trying to promote enmity between different groups, reasons could be any. It could be on grounds of religion, you are trying to create differences between people belonging to different religions or belonging to different sects of the same religion or if people they are being uh, made to fight on grounds of race, place of birth, residence, language etc. Or if you are doing any act that is prejudicial to maintenance of harmony because you are trying to create a discord amongst the society. So as per the law, Whoever by words either spoken or written or by signs or by visible representations or through electronic communication. Electronic communication now this has been added in the BNS or otherwise promotes or attempts to promote on grounds of religion, race, place of birth or residence, language, caste or community or any other ground whatsoever disharmony or feelings of enmity, hatred or ill will between different religions, racial language or regional groups of caste or communities. So electronic communication, now this has been added as a means of spreading disharmony. And there is one new provision that has been added, subsection D, that has been added to section 197 that deals with imputations, assertions that are prejudicial to national integration and it says, so whoever makes or publishes false or misleading information jeopardizing the sovereignty, unity and integrity or security of India, then such a person shall be punished with imprisonment which may extend to 3 years or with fine or with both. So this section 197 subsection 1 D of the BNS, it introduces a provision with the objective to deter or to stop the dissemination of false information that could pose a threat to our country's core values that could be divisive and that could pose a threat to our security. So now that has been also made a punishable offence under the BNS. So viewers, in this session we tried to discuss the various offences regarding uh, elections, coins, currency notes, stamps and also offences that are affecting the public tranquility. That will be all for this session. Thank you. Jai Hind.